मोले के रोका कि बुक हो गई रोको रोका 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 इसके बाद रोको या सो या यू बुक द वाइफ नो बिकॉज वी वी अडोर्ड माय मदर ओके ओके वी अडोर्ड so had your mother been a working woman i don't know what i would have the done the dynamics would have been different i, I don't would. know that's why i'm thinking because another lady she right. was an author elder to me right and she has terrible terrible friction uh uh-huh. with her 50 plus daughters they do not wish to see anything they always fault finding fault finding but but why like what's the reason Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Petty Why, things, you know, like household. petty things, petty things. Yeah, that's every household, right? In a way. You know, but that doesn't make it right. You know, it doesn't. Like, like my my always example about uh, it's every household is there are twenty million people or two hundred million people, whatever number you put, large number of people uh-huh. suffering from cancer. Right. But if I have cancer right. and I'm in pain, uh-huh. I cannot say there are 20 million people suffering from cancer, so my pain is nothing. My pain is real yes. for me. Yes, I am in pain. Yes, I I cannot be told don't think you are unusual because 20 million people. Right. I mean, but I am the one suffering with the pain. Yes, you get my point. Yeah, expectations. What I'm going to say? Expectations from an individual. No, when when you have that pain, it is very real, irrespective of whether it is it is yeah, true so, in every house. So you house. expect the other person to understand, right? No, then? I'm saying I'm saying the pain is real. Sure, but like where is this but, headed? But the answer that everybody has the pain does not serve well. So someone giving you that kind of a response ticks you off, right? So you expect that person to understand that my pain is my pain. That's what I'm saying, like expectation, right? I, for me, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> that brings me to that brings me to Lalita, Lalita. That that's your that's that's I think you innate. Know, I'm, I'm like many things are no-brainer. I mean. What were most this, of the people? This may be my biggest fault. I mean, no, I think that's your uh, fingerprint that differentiates you. Like, Because I would never ever have said that. Right, exactly. That it, it would never that, strike. That separates say, you from the flock. Right? Hey, so, you know. Okay. How about this? Someone. Uh, this is what I have noticed a lot. When you hear a no-brainer. you react to it most of the people say oh, either that's they will indulge yeah either they will indulge they will be like yeah yeah at the back of their head they will know that okay this is a bullshit question or this is a bullshit remark right no but that but, is when it comes like as if you are trying to help me see when it comes in the garb of being helping you right because you are my friend you're hmm. supposed to empathize yeah but i think you will give shit to your friend as well that why are you asking me this stupid question that's what i no, think no i don't i boil within like <laughs> For 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 I simmer for a couple of days because it's my good manners that don't come out. Yeah, but someone who you so, love, for example, your daughter. So you to her, I have to be very very careful how I say. No, the so question was say, like, uh, so you give shit to strangers or you you know seethe within, but what uh, like what happens when your daughter behaves in a certain no, way? No, I do you not. Have, you I have to be very not. careful with I that. I have to be very very. Why careful. why is that? I have to be very careful what I say to her and what I uh, you know what I'm truly feeling. because you care uh, that's why no because i think the expectation from her mm-hmm. and this may be again wrong right my view of what she i think is that i should always be in control i should always be the larger person and i generally do not uh look at people the way they are and i uh, you know my expectation from them is too too high right. or something like this i mean Understood. maybe when you ask her her question uh, uh she may be surprised or she might have a different answer i do not know that but but i am very very careful how i choose my words i there just remain silent hmm okay so when you said that you're very careful when you choose your words now you've spent major chunk of your life working in corporate sector right Yeah. Tell me about that first. Like you know, you 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 ooze out leadership qualities. You are really? like, yeah yeah you do. I mean, yeah. I, anyone who sits and talks to you will understand. <laughs> will get it. You know, they are loud, like slap on your face kind of loud. The vibes. So how was it when you started? 
So where did you start? And you know, as a woman, you made it. Uh, I'm not going into the family life yet. We'll go there. But but you know, as a woman, you made it. So it's it's a, it's a thing, right? That a woman has to hustle twice harder than a man if she has to go through all these. You know, I come from a very traditional Tambram family. Hmm. Very traditional. Uh, the lines were drawn between what you will do and what you will not do. Right. Uh, there was my my dad is a generation or two before me. Hmm. I was born when he was forty years old. Right. And, and between my elder brother and me, there's a thirteen plus years difference. Okay. And so you were raised with you are a girl. You are going to get married. Hmm. But but. Education was important. Yeah, they knew that. Right? Reading was important. Right. You always woken up even as a five-year-old at four o'clock to read because that this is, is a the time to read. tradition. It's a time tradition. Four a.m. Four a.m. You have to get up because that's the Brahma Muhurtam and that's when you read at that time. It sticks. Right. It stays with you. Right. And uh, quite often, I thought I and wish read, I had different parents. And read what? <laughs> You know, paddy, paddy, which study? Right. Study was the thing. Right. It was Whatever. generally school books, uh-huh. but in the holidays, you were expected to read the classics. Right. You were expected to read good books. Good books, good books. Not yeah. Harold Robbins. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, so you were raised like that, uh-huh. but I had the advantage of having been born when my father was 40 years old. Right. And so when I was 10, he's already 50, uh-huh. uh, a little more older right. and not as he was in his 20s, which is when my elder two brothers were born. Right. When they would be caned and all that. Uh-huh. And secondly, he's also risen in his, Tough love. In, in his, uh, <laughs> you know, in his career. Right. He has risen, so he has just didn't have much time for us. Right. Uh, on a day-to-day basis, Understood, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, uh, so why the world was open to you to study and read, but not go out there and explore. Uh-huh. And the thing was always like, you will study so that you will be good enough to have a better husband. Yeah, that was the perspective. Let it keep, let it I have to you. settle you. Settle you, yeah. Settle you. That's settle like you. a father's burden in Indian families. You are my liability. Right. I've heard that several times. Right. And because uh, I was just finishing my final year BCom when he, hmm. when he retired. Uh, six months after that, I so when he retired, so it was like, uh, you are my liability, you are my liability. Right. Okay. And then, so... But I, as a human being, I was raised in the railway colony, going out and playing with the boys, badminton or jumping around the right. trees, monkeys up the tree. Right. And because it was a safe environment yeah. to grow, uh, you know, so that outside world was something different from the inside world. Sure. And uh, <laughs> so there was always that uncertainty how far I can push, how far mm. I can push. Because there's this clock ticking, right? That, okay, now yeah, you've like come how off much? Age. Because I have to look at him and see, is he in a good mood? Right. Can I can I just, you know? Yeah. And then what happened was uh, in this BCom final year, and he has just retired, right. and he's like, you're my liability, I need mm, to. Because only one. then I will have peace. Right. I, will, I have. <laughs> no, the thing was, I have to do my duty. It yeah. is my duty towards you. Right. And I don't know what how marriage is anyway settling because I think it's the most <laughs> unsettling of engagements. I mean, I think so. Can most, be very most. volatile. Sometimes it works. Uh, sometimes it works, but sometimes it, people both adjust. need to want the same. Yes. Thing. And quite most of the time people adjust right. and then they get habitual. But most of the times it's volatile. Yeah, but even though I was a very reserved person and I didn't have any conversation of what my vision for my life was. Right. Because because you are only, you know, you are, you are confined. Yeah. Mentally you are exposed, but physically you are confined. Right, right. Uh, so you didn't really engage with strangers so much. Mm. Uh, you know, and so... I was engaged in my final year BCom before my exams. Right. For father's choice. Right. And that 
guy didn't want to talk to me i i said would you like, get in would, this would you would you like to talk i mean now i'm some 20 years old ish okay right i mean i was not even 21 okay right? and uh, and the thing in that era and i'm right. talking early 80s yeah. is that the man has to take the initiative you can't be seen as taking the initiative but uh, this is almost the 40 way years it ago. is right now like even now the man has to so take you can initiative. imagine 40 years ago. right way more and i because i have <laughs> seen my father being the man of the house taking all the critical right. decisions uh he didn't ask what is your opinion Hmm. He just told you what was his decision. And sure. Uh, you know, so I was also used to it. Right. Though somehow you are uncomfortable, but you don't know how to break that. You yeah. don't know how to break yeah. that. And so I was hoping that he would say, yes, I would like to talk to her. Right. And I wanted to tell him that I have dreams of my own. Okay. Uh, but the boy didn't want to talk to me. <laughs> he's like, it's a yes from me. And he's like, there's no one like to talk. That's nice. That's I felt different. pretty strange. Yeah. And my dad was pretty happy. Okay, the first boy we seen is a Do yes. you think that since you were exposed to... I'm just talking in, in terms of education and exposure. And, you know, you playing, you grew up in a safe environment, uh, a conducive environment. Because you had a lot of exposure and knowledge, is that the reason why you realize that, okay... This isn't how it should be. Like, you know, this guy. So for the guy, he was like, yeah, I'm going to get married to this girl. You were like, why isn't he behaving properly? Like, what's this? He was deal? expecting a mother figure from this girl. Okay. Because a time brand traditional right, girl right. will come and... You wanted something more you. out of it, right? I, I you were like, romance. Where's the romance, dude? <laughs> not the romance. I wanted an equal partnership. And right. I had my own personal dreams for achievement. Yes. Uh, and at that time, I didn't know how to go about it. Mm. Uh, you need a partner. You know, whereas you partner. My, my brother went away to the US in 1970. Okay. You know, so he was one of the very first ones to go uh, and study there. And, right. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> That's cool. That's from cool. IIT, you would take the next plane and you would go. Yeah. So you, I came from that kind of a house and he was my role model. Right. Whereas my father felt he can't be a role model. He's a boy. He can go where he mm. wants. You're a yeah. girl. Yeah. You may find a man who may go. Ah. <laughs> but by now, he's like retired. Right. He wants his children next to him. Right. He's like, no, no army. Because their life is yeah. certain. I'm like, why not I marry an army man? Right. Yeah. I like that life. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> they drink. Or their lives are uncertain. What will happen to you? Okay. Blah, blah. Then, then okay, why not I see one of these guys who are from overseas? Right. After all, my brother is yeah. overseas. But then already yeah. 10, 11 years, he was already over in the US. <laughs> so why don't I see? No, no, no. There have been a lot of, you know, bad cases yeah. and then you will be so far away yeah. uh, we need my ch- children in our old age yeah. <laughs> like in children <laughs> I get it, yeah. so but then I have come over a period of living to believe in karma uh-huh. and, and my daughter and some others also feel that's a very passive thing but it's not passive I'm just looking back and seeing hmm. the decisions I made uh, later on uh, some things were trust on you, uh, but you could not, uh, like today, nothing can be trust on me, uh, you know, you unless are. you are my friend and you say, let's have coffee in CCD instead of Starbucks where I wanted to go. Okay, that's a small compromise. Okay. I'm not going to go. But, uh, you know, in a larger thing, I also, because the power structure in the house is so entrenched, right. you know, that that you would voice against that uh, power right. uh, was, was totally unacceptable and you you believed in it. Right. You also didn't no drop the bottle. There was no dissent. Like yeah. a you may, you may go home and cry in the bathroom mm. because if you're seen as crying, right. uh, why are you crying? Then you don't have no answer. <laughs> You know, and then there will be like, yeah. did a boy do something? Right. You know, always that would be, I'm mm. like, man, <laughs> I told my father, I am your product. You are supposed to have raised me. Yeah. How come you don't have confidence in what you're creating? But I also think, looking <laughs> at you, that he did a fine job. Okay, sure, marriage was a bit of, you know. You know, 
he is hundred and first if he had lived. Right. Uh, today was about two weeks ah, ago nice. on eighth of February, and I thought a lot about it, a lot about it. Right. And I told my cousin, A, hey, it's my father's hundred and first birthday. Anyway, see, yeah. So he said, uh, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm mentally having a conversation with you. Nice. What will I do?" I don't want to go out and feed somebody who didn't know him and then said, what kind of food have you given me? It's a very personal, <laughs> yeah, private yeah. thing. And I said, Appa, I owe you so much. Yes. Yes. What a privileged life. Yes. What a safe life. Yeah. Uh, you know, and just before he died, 23, 24 years back, he said something that still rings in my ears, you know. And he said, you are smarter than me. I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. You are more you know, I hate it. This is that, you know, you've been trying to achieve or do something, but your parents, especially fathers, they, they, they'll never show that they are happy or satisfied or content with what you're doing, right? After years of, you know, they will drop this thing that, okay, okay, you're doing something really fine. And I'm like, Dad, why didn't you like, say that? Yeah, I yeah, got this. Yeah, yeah, why didn't you say that 10 years ago <laughs> when I was grinding my ass? Like, come on, that's some words of encouragement. But I think that works. That's how fathers should be. I think that's how fathers should be. Yeah. I'll, I'll be that father. I will give my son or daughter shit. I'll be like, no, you've done nothing. And that pushes you to do something, right? You have to set the bar high. Right, right. But, but... Uh, you know, even by accident, I've become a working woman. Right. So, which is why I say karma played such a major yes, yes. part. Yeah. How did you get into professional this? You know, because because this this guy, the engagement yeah. the guy who said yes, right, right. Uh, without even talking. Are you allowed to call him your ex-husband? Uh, I mean, <laughs> boy number one, let's yeah. say. Oh, okay then. Yes, boy number one. Boy number one. Yeah. And then he, and then I'm like. How are these men getting married? I mean, <laughs> because there are women then, who will get you know, married. I said, guy. It's easy to say just by looking, but yeah. is that all? I, yeah. mean, I felt there was more. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, so when this this thing broke, the, the engagement, yeah, the uh, the engagement actually didn't happen in Tamil. It's a it's a very you know, you just exchange fruits, right. More like Roka, ki book yeah, over. Roko. Bo yeah, yeah, Roka. 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 <laughs> Roka. <laughs> it became a Roko. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you book the wife. That that's how it works. So you what book the happened wife. is my brother, my doctor brother, he met with a serious accident, fatal accident, and died. Okay. Few days before my final year exams, hmm. which was most traumatic, yeah. highly sure. traumatic experience for my parents, for, for you. us, yeah. uh, his siblings, and it was terrible, terrible time. I was only 33 years old, and, uh, uh, you know, so so this engagement thing didn't go ahead, mm. because they felt it was a bad sign or yeah. something like that. And I was like, I have lost a very youthful young brother. Yeah. And my parents had lost a son just after they retire when they think, oh, I have a son who I can lean on. Hmm. That's a big tragedy. Yeah. You know, the permanence of it. Yeah. The permanence and the unexpectedness of it. Yeah. And uh, so I then all that went and I told my dad, my brother was in the US, he sent me the GMAT and he said, now is your time, yep. you will do Come here and you will do MBA, here is Kaplan mm. book, you know those days you, you had the physical yeah. book that came by mail. I have paid for your GMAT, go and do it, I will take care of you. Right. And I was, set my heart on it. Mm. That I found was the path I wanted to take. Right. Because I always like to follow my elder brother. Right. He was sort of this Karma. desirable man, yeah. everybody wanted. Like when my mother asked me, what will satisfy you? What yeah. kind of a boy? I said, why not like my brother? Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he could he could own a room. Mm. He would walk in and he would, everybody would be looking at him. Yeah. Because of how he spoke. Right. He engaged with you. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was very intelligent. He could talk about anything. He had a great sense of humor. Right. And very aware, educated, 
uh, all of that and it yeah. was a wonderful package you know right. and i said when I, when i have one in the home why can i find one like him yeah i said go and find me one like him right. and so when this happened i started but you know again this whole doctor should not go out to work hmm. syndrome yeah. is, is very high in my generation now it's much less but yeah. still there are and then now i realize that every family evolves in a different just because my family has evolved doesn't mean the whole society yeah, yeah. Doesn't somebody like somebody doesn't is like still in the 60s you know? so, so see we have sects right so there are there are business families there are baniyas there are rajputs yeah. there are uh muslim families most of them they they, they come from you know that uh, the, the mindset is very uh, what do you say they are conservative right so it takes time to evolve even if they want to they wouldn't because of the society pressure so yeah everyone will not evolve similarly so my parents right they they had to separate from their respective families like they 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 uh, like it was a love wedlock right so they had to fight their respective families and then they separated i think that played a major role in how my mother and father brought my sister and me up right so we were given all those liberties like yeah. you know that you know yeah. go take a bite take a right. bite if you don't dare you lose the, the, right. that was the mindset that go go for it go for it so i think they separated from their families that help a lot so yeah if we are in a joint family setup which is very prevalent in india i think people tend to hold back right you know these values ki ladki hai bahar nahi bhejna sure they are they are worried a bit we were not in a joint family we still were, I mean, we you were tambran that's yeah. enough <laughs> that was enough <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> you you know so he didn't let me go and write to gmat because you had to go to bangalore those days i got okay. to be 81 Oh, you have to go to Bangalore to write. To sit for an exam. Uh, to write the GMAT. Okay. You need the GMAT to apply. Sure, right? sure, I know, but Pune didn't have any. I wasn't in Pune. I was in the, small town the, Karnataka. Karnataka. Okay. Pune, I came only twenty years ago. Okay. Uh, you know, after I started working. So if MBA didn't happen, so how did this happen? Like what happened? So you know, so so my train is at eight o'clock. At around three or four, I'm like getting ready to go. and i was i was like till now the drama has been started yeah nor has he stopped me nor has he shown me the green light i don't know where it was going but by 3 o'clock as the temperature was rising and right. i said no way i'm letting you leave the house right now yeah. you know? and uh, so i didn't go okay i did not go i did not write the exam my brother was very upset uh-huh. i already paid the 40 dollar that you did go and <laughs> i i said how do i yeah because it's a big barrier Yeah. It's a big barrier. Uh, then anyway, uh, so now since the engagement broke, and I'm not allowed to do this, there was uh, the university in the town. Right. So I went and wrote the entrance exam for that university. MBA. Okay. Okay. Because it was now too late. It was already hmm. May. And that was the only thing that was open. Right. You know, for the for that academic right. year. and then there were 3000 people who took that entrance right. exam for 30 seats right. you know when you talk of competition i'm saying there always was competition sure yeah you know 30 people yeah. it's what 1% of yeah 1% of out of 30 3000 yeah 3000 yeah. 3000 people and uh, so i got into that mba right so i put my heart and soul in it yeah. i was a first rank holder nice and then i got jobs yeah after i finished my mba Th- that's like you know <laughs> there was a time actually there was a time when people cleared mbas and they got jobs you know there was this golden era of mba but Now, i didn't join any of those i'm sure because you, you what, what did why? you do you are that kind studying of... studying is okay but why does a woman need to go out and work oh and then again parents my father is still there right right <laughs> It's okay. You did well. All that you got the offer. Yeah. Oh, why do you need to go private yeah. sector? We don't know what is happening. Am I not Job providing not, enough? <laughs> no, husband will provide. Oh, uh, it's not hmm. you. Now you're already twenty-three, twenty-four. Yeah. Uh, you know whatever age I was yeah. when I finished. And uh, <laughs> so, what do you do? I right. mean. Uh, and private sector jobs are not uh, secure right 
and uh, you might have to do things that you don't wish to do and, okay. uh, you know you being a girl people will take advantage of you after all you don't know the world right. and i say who is responsible for that right by yeah. now i'm talking back yeah. and like who is responsible right don't don't make it look like i have a negative right. when you had the choice and you didn't let mm. me do it and this is the time okay i got this time i learn right. from the way no 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 so there was a, another stop right and so one whole year after this rank after finishing a mba after saying no to all the job offers uh-huh. i'm sitting at home and my mom is saying why don't you learn how to cook uh-huh. so that you don't bring shame to me and i don't blame her as well because i mean her resources and knowledge must have been limited as well she like kuch to kare you know you can't just hate on parents no because she 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 never said anything against what my father had to say right because she was very smart that way. ah yeah 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 they she are. never took up for her kids if later on she might have said a uh, thing but when she will see how he will how he is reacting hmm. uh, and and then she Okay. Go up. She 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 follow through. Right, right. She will never say anything against. Okay. They were married for fifty five years. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that's their design. So how how did this thing work? So uh, so one whole year I rebelled, uh, like talking back, hmm. not always following, not entering the kitchen. Right. I'll not do what you want. Right. I mean, I had now enough of this. Yeah. Because now I felt really trapped yeah. because it was a small town. Yeah. small i didn't have any role models mm. uh, i really wanted now something big and i said uh, and uh, these people weren't letting me explore anything right. you know and uh, so one fine day i was i would read a lot right i would read the hindu newspaper from right. top to bottom i would read all the magazines and i would read all the story books all of that i yeah. did and then one day i saw a big advertisement general insurance corporation assistant administrative officer class 1 officer uh, application form yeah. it was a huge page yeah, the newspapers are right yeah. newspaper yeah those days everything was in the newspaper so sure, that you was social media were in the newspaper <laughs> yeah i still remember you know yeah. <laughs> yeah you had to go through those millions yeah. of numbers and find yours and oh shit i f f f no <laughs> So I secretly applied for it. Hmm. I said, "Okay, this is public sector. Yeah, he he has something against private sector. Right. Let me go to public sector. Right, right. Uh, before my when I was doing my BCom, I tried the IAS, but a yeah. very half-hearted right. way, and then my brother died, and so it was not a proper preparation. Sure. You know. Uh, so, but so I filled this form, and then I went and wrote the. entrance exam right. because they had the written test right. right that i don't know how we allowed me because it was in bangalore and then we all went like a you know like a holiday yeah. family holiday and okay i went and wrote that exam i cleared that i was called for group interview gd gd gd, yeah. GD. Yeah. and that was also in bangalore uh, i cleared that and then they called me for a personal interview right uh, and after Five or six months after that, uh, I got a letter that you need to go for the medical. Okay, this and sounds like a military entrance exam. Yeah, it's a public sector. This is how they do. So uh, even public sector, so civil jobs in public sector, even they have medical tests. Yeah, medical. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you don't have to be like Pelwan. No, no, I get it. I get it. But I you have to full be body checkup. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You had a like a one or. one or two hour I, i've done the nda medical so that oh, is extremely that is embarrassing like... <laughs> uh, that's the story for i've written about it in sath as well yeah, yeah. i read that yeah really. yeah so then i got the job ha yeah. and the job the training was in faridabad okay you know, six months training as an right. officer and then i cried and i said i mean i said repeatedly you put road blocks ha uh-huh. I don't wish to get married. Right. I've got this. This is now public sector. Right. It's quasi government. Yeah. You have to allow me. Hmm. I've gone through the whole rigor. Yeah. What's the point of doing all of this? Yeah. Know, and now, and then he relented. Yeah. He relented, and then he came and dropped me in for the bar. He checked my room. Yeah. He talked to the people. Uh, yeah. All that. I said that's okay. Yeah. 
that's fine even i would do that yeah, yeah. Uh, for my daughter uh, and then i was sent yep i i, I was posted in mumbai yep. Put the Mumbai. Motion, right? yeah. That was my dream destination <laughs> right. at that time. From small that's town the, that's Karnataka Indian, to reach that, Mumbai. That's the Indian dream. I mean, everyone Mumbai, wants to man. reach Mumbai. Eighties, there were no Pune and all was not a place. And Delhi has to. never been the dream destination. No, Delhi. Is, yes. So mm. it was the financial capital. Still is. Everyone wants the to. The professionals in Mumbai, the way they spoke. Right. Uh, you know, and we had a lot of professionals in right. our family in a close network, uh-huh. and so. I landed there and that transformed me okay. overnight. Nice. Because nice. I think I already had. Because that was really you. It didn't transform you. It just. It was sh- already there. For what it just showed you who you really months. are. Yeah. This is what my aunt said. She said, "If you didn't have it, you wouldn't. Yeah, I you already had it. You, it, you, you just got the chance." See, when, when I think, I think you can easily separate someone who feigns it, who fakes it, right? You can. He has acquired it, but you will know what. Uh, you know, when you see someone who has it inbuilt, like it's his design or it's her design, you get to know that. So there's a difference. And I used to tell my dad, I said, This is me, yeah. I mean, I said, How would you not think that I would be somewhat like you? Yeah. Because his life is like that. Yeah. You know, education was <laughs> his, his, his philosophy. Yeah, I mean, right. he has wonderful philosophy. Yeah. And I've learned a lot from it. And every day I want to thank him is that. Education, Education is never, all I can give you. Yes. Nobody can steal it from mm, you. Never goes and waste. It will never go waste. Yeah. And that is what is going to hold you in good stead when uh, yes. things don't go well. That th- those are like you know it's like I'm listening to my father right now. That's exactly what he says. He says I can't give you gold and jewelry right. and all of that. But I can give you the education. Yes. So whatever only thing was girl cannot go out and study. You know I mean. Right. But I said, well, at least I got that education. Yeah. And the safe environment to study in the home. Right. You know books were never a thing. Uh, not that you should go and buy a second hand book. Yeah. None of those things. Yeah. yeah. You know, none of those things. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so here we are. Fantastic. Books. Now, since you've, you've mentioned books, let's just, you know, jump on books because yeah. that's what I really want to do. What do you see that's happening in Indian literature scene right now? The Indian literature scene. I'm not, okay, I'm, I'm not really happy and satisfied with what I see right now because, uh, okay, I don't want to complain about people like Shashi Tharoor, Shobha De, Chetan Bhagat, Durjoy Datta and uh, Ravindra Singh, people like, because they've made it, right? They've made it, they, but they are the torch bearers and honestly, they're not extraordinary, right? I see them, for how long are we going to listen to these people in Lit Fest again and again, especially when they're not, you know, coming up with something really fantastic? So I don't want to blame the writers that, okay, the writers aren't, we don't have good I think we have phenomenal writers. We have fantastic writers. But what's with the platform? What's happening? I'm not happy with it personally. You know, I entirely agree. Whatever you say is absolutely right. Uh, but you know, we as a country for centuries, we are a land of storytellers. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have wonderful, wonderful stories. Right. But somewhere, you know, when the publishing industry is mm. veering towards a Western mindset, right? And in almost everything that we do, right. you know, we tend to right. toe that line. But the very fact that younger people like you are devoting so much time to telling the stories that mean something from your own experience mm-hmm. set in India, relatable to, right. to majority of Indians. And the fact that there is dissatisfaction, mm. uh, you know, I think these are very good things because good things come out of dissatisfaction. Yes. Obviously, if you're satisfied, that's the end of it. Complicent. If you see a successful right. people, you know, right. if you ask Accomplished actors. The right. other day, Gary Gary Oldman, uh, right. you know, which is the best, uh, you know, role that, that you can. play. Okay. And I've heard many senior actors who have had like 40, 50 year career. Right. They say it's yet to come. Fantastic. How can yes. I? How can I say the one that I did five years back was the yeah. was the best? Although he, he is an exceptional actor. And, I mean, and if you were greatest. to look at his body of work and you say, man, he's done <laughs> yeah. so many. Yeah. 
Gary Oldman. Gary freaking Oldman. Yeah. Any one of these people. Yeah. Uh, you know, Clint Eastwood. Right. And Clint Eastwood is my all-time hero. He's 90 years <laughs> His face old. works for him. Man, he's yeah. a director. Yeah. The makes, most makes. challenging job in the world, I think, is that. Yeah. Director. Right. Because you have to be creatively very sharp and open and everything. Yes. And you have to be a people's person. You yeah. have to get the best out of your team. Right. Not just the actor. Right. You know, your whole team. Your cinematographer, screenplay writer, your cameraman. Yeah. Everybody. They, they, your, and he's a guy who said, I believe, doesn't even raise his voice. Yeah. He the is. fact that he's clicked, he That's wrote, true. you pay obedience. He just needs a cigar in his that. mouth. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He barely talks. Talks with his actions. You know, he doesn't say action and cut. Okay, didn't know that. But the people I look up to and I say, man, he doesn't say, means he doesn't assert his authority. I'm now the director and right. the action. Right. No, he says. So his team knows him, right? That's how he functions. So, I guess. And generally, these people work in teams and they, right, yeah. once they get used to it, they work with each other yeah. all the time. And, and since he's made. 40 movies. I didn't know he had directed 40 movies. He has directed what? 40 movies. What? Clint Eastwood? If you, you sure? take the big, big names, they're all directed by him. Are you sure? We are not talking production house and produced by him? Directed? Directed. 40. I, know, I don't think it's 40 movies. You you check it I out. I will. I you will. Check it out. We just diverted from literature. But 40 movies? 40. No way. It's 40. Anyway. And fantastic movies. His work and is... He, he says, whenever you're ready. Huh? That's his action. Oh, he's nice. like ah, action camera. That no, 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 no. No, 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 you're right. He says, "I know what it is for an actor." He's already highly strung. Yeah, yeah. See, while all the work is important, it is the actor who encompasses everything: the written word, the intent, the unsaid word, the emotion in that yes. two three minutes. Yes. Yes. That essence he has to bring, yeah. and in front of two hundred people, yeah, it's not like he's doing it alone in his bathroom in front of the mirror. I, I get it. I'm sure they are better there than you know, in front of so many people, and yeah. some some scenes may be awkward scene. Yeah, uh, and and so he knows how it is, and he says, "Whenever you're ready." Yeah, and then he's like, okay, that's enough. Yeah. I mean, that's the cut. Yeah, <laughs> that's enough. Yeah, I that's mean. enough. That's <laughs> and then if you don't, so you know. Uh, so the written word is very, very, I think, important. And the fact that there is dissatisfaction is a very good beginning. Mm -hmm. Because I see that uh, yesterday I spoke to a new publisher. Yeah, you yeah. know, the thing that we have been talking about, right. you and I, uh, yeah. the cooperator. There's already something like that. A group of uh, writers have come together. They said, we got fed up of this whole system. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have become our own publisher. Okay. You know, in their uh, thing, it's not a self-publishing. Right. But but out of dissatisfaction, something new comes up. Do you I'm think not satisfied with this dress or so buy a new one. Do Do you think we are idolizing the wrong people? Because I think so. I think it is the risk averseness of the major publishers and even the writers who are more <coughs> like business minded. The, okay, this is trending, hai, pulse of the generation. Let's just write on that. A writer shouldn't think like that. But okay, this is trending, I'm going to write about that. You're a goddamn writer. It's it's innate or it's not there. The way we said that, you can easily differentiate between a fakester and, you know, someone who is original. So when you have to write about, let's say, family or thriller or drama or your thing is like, you know, you come from rural background and that's what you write about. You write about that. Right. You write your story. Exactly. It cannot be dictated by market demand. Right. So when I ask three major publishers this mm -hmm. question, like, what exactly are you looking for? Are yeah. there anything that you look for? Is there, is there a preferred genre? That right, you prefer? right. I mean, beyond fiction and non-fiction. It's mm. too wide a yeah. uh, classification. Right. So they tell me, Go and see the books that we have launched in the last one year. Okay. I said, wouldn't you not want to do what you already launched? Right. So my yeah. looking at what you did should act, should exclude them as something that you would do in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you had four books already on Kashmir, right? 
either it has to be something very different from what is already there right. or that's a big no no because we are already done for a book yeah. so you are asking me to look at what you mm. have already launched makes no sense to me yes i told her that yeah i told her i said i am very new so yeah. help me decide right the way i look at it as mm. a business woman i have already done that if i have already manufactured this mug and it's already been in the market right why would i next want to do the same thing and replicate mm. of that yeah which is what a lot of publishers are doing they're not taking risks they're not taking risks yeah. they they want to this is tried and tested right till you somehow on your own manage which is what chetan bhagat did initially right, right. and amish 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 yeah uh, these two we owe a lot to them people yes. like yes. to uh, you know say not so complimentary things right. uh, about uh, bhagat Bhagat's and amish yeah yeah but i think uh, authors of today and the publishing industry owe him a lot because he suddenly made it cool Yeah. Uh, yeah you know if you see it wasn't there there, there were the push one sayings and but they were the you know they were the elite they were the cream hmm. but what you want in writing is at every level that they should be able yeah. you know, not everybody can read a chetan bang right. you know uh, push one saying and enjoy that i i also feel that uh, genres and writers aren't categorized well enough in india so they won't people just want to say oh i want to read chetan bhagat oh i hate Chet- chetan bhagat yeah. they are so when i see uh, the literature world outside india right so there is a proper fan following when it comes to fantasy there is yeah. a different world fantasy yeah. right and people follow that people follow those authors and <laughs> just like music right they follow bands and then they don't listen to it that's what i really think should be the thing in india as well yeah. so these are fantasy writers yeah go behind them and you know follow them like crazy Harry Potter fans, yeah, fine, and then finally, then there's transgressional writers like Chuck Palahniuk, right? Fight Club, all those people who've written such stuff. There is an entire major cult fan following of that right, guy, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. They, they've categorized stuff. So you won't see Chuck Palahniuk fighting with J.K. Rowling for some reason. Doesn't make sense, right? Doesn't make sense. So I don't think that's happening over here. So I have read several of Tarot's books. Right. And I, I I absolutely love his work, right. and now he's a politician, so his mm. work is more non-fiction yeah. uh, related to his political work, right. which he himself admits. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to. He says non-fiction uh, needs a lot more mind space. Okay. You know, it's easier for me to write a non-fiction, right. and he will write what will help him in this part. Right. So to that extent. His writing is driven, but right. if you see his earlier work, right? Uh, you know his fiction. I think he's only written two fiction books: the great, the great, uh, great something uh, Indian, yeah, the great, yeah, Indian, yeah, the great Indian story, a great Indian novel, yeah, something like that, yeah. You know, and one more on the on the film industry. Those those, those were fictional stories. Uh, why why we do need the Tharoors? Yeah, uh, you need. everybody at right. every level right. you know it cannot be an elitist saint stephen school dominated mm. english language yes. why isn't a hindi author a role model right. popular guy right. why isn't he there right. or she there yeah yeah or or, or tamil or regional you or, know or a tamil or, or dogri where i come this from murugan came in because of whatever is mm. uh, you know the the ban and right, right. he was arrested for right. what he wrote and yeah. all that but he needs to be in the pan india space right. why aren't we translating bengali novels to tamil tamil yeah. to marathi marathi to hindi or even regional to english because there's a l- we do a lot more of that okay okay english to regional and regional to english we do okay, that's but not well. regional to regional hmm Yeah. So, so if I'm a, I'm a Tamilian, why can't I read Bengali literature? Yeah, I should. Yeah, that's the entire industry right there. Yes, today I made a comment and I said, why wouldn't you think of that? Right. Yeah. You know, because that is where our stories are. Mm-hmm. That is where our stories come. The Chetan Bhagat, the thing about him is his stories are set in small town India. Right. They are set in small town India with big dreams. Right. 
Yeah, that's his it's big, niche. Big, that's that it. is what India is. 60% below the age of 30. Right. You, you're full of hope. Right. Of expectation. Yeah. Uh, you know, you want to achieve. And today the world has shrunk. In yeah. my time, we had to look at Life magazine. There's a magazine that will it. come. Even the letter would take, you know, on the one month and one month you would. Yeah. Now everything is instant. Yeah. It's the internet has shrunk seconds. the world. So seconds. your passion and everything is not much different from small town to a big town. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. may be slightly ahead, but it's not that different yes. as it was, yes. say, 50 years ago, 40 years ago. You know. So writing, you have to write for all of them. Yeah. You know, demographics makes a lot. Uh, why are we judging the publishing industry only on English language books? It's hardly 2% people read it. Okay. English is only 2%. But we talk like as if that is the world. Okay. It's not. Right. Hmm. So you have to encompass everything. Hmm. You have to encompass. So translation work is very big work. Yeah. If you, if you can come, if you can bring up a model of publishing books, right. that is... <coughs> Give me a minute. Please. You know, that is a win-win to all involved. Mm. Uh, that will be a wonderful thing. Right. And all of this, my thing is, if a man can think it or a woman can think it, can it can be done. It can be done, yes. Wow. You have to make it happen. Mm. Well, if, like I keep telling my mate, that, oh, that is impossible, that won't become cleaner. I'm like, man, put a plane carrying 200 people in air to fly for 15 hours. Okay. I said, that was impossible. Yeah. <laughs> Start with Da Vinci and his flight ideas. But yeah, that happened. <laughs> I said, the boat that you didn't imagine would float is now a submarine touching the bottom of the ocean <laughs> and still people are living. These are small things. And, and, uh, how does your mate react to that? <laughs> she is like, man, I that. can't win this <laughs> argument. <laughs> <laughs> she must be like, I am going to talk about this in the plane. But I learned a lot from her. She has the name and wisdom. At this guest, Shraddha, artist. She said that if you look at something as in a living being, a living being, uh, not necessarily a human being, any animal, if you look at that being for quite some time, you can actually find a guru in that being. Yeah. Yeah. So we are talking a human being who handles a family, your maid. I mean, I'm, of course, you will learn tens of thousands of things from You know, I maid. think I learned a lot more from raising a child right. than being a child myself. That, because in my Come time, on, yeah. it was... I say you do. Right. Whereas I didn't want that. Yeah. And to a, initially that's what you do, right? right. Wear your shoes, 8 yeah. o'clock at yeah. the time, finish your yeah. meal, it's 9 o'clock, go yeah. to bed. And yeah. You do that till you're 6, yeah. 7. And then the child suddenly becomes. And then you're by ready, the time they're 11 and 12, yeah. you're like, man, what I did 3 years back is not working. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this child, <laughs> he's not listening to me. Yeah. And then I ch just changed my tactic, tactics, yeah. and I said, "Man, I wanted you to do this. Why didn't you do it? What mm -hmm. happened?" Yeah. And then I found she had right. a reason why she didn't do mm -hmm. it, and then she also had a rational why that need not be done because something Anyone. else better. And I'm saying, "Man, if I Super, leave it to yeah. her, she's thinking more than me because I'm limited by what I know. Yeah. This is what I tell my." My, my juniors would mm. come and say, you said it, so it's okay. I said, no, I want you to challenge me because yeah. I am limited by what I know. Right, right, right. I want my understanding to be expanded by what you also know. I'm yeah. willing to listen to that. Yeah. And at some time, I might even say crap, but after two days, I might still be thinking and say, hey, it wasn't yeah. really crap. That's learning, you know? that's learning. I have learned by raising a child. Because yeah. the child is, you know, naturally intuitive. Right. They do not have the past baggage of, you know, judgments that Yet. this is good and yeah. bad yeah. Or, or this cannot be done by it cannot be done. Yeah, the decision making is very pure, like unaffected, right? Yeah. And they, they, they work on impulse. So sometimes it's a nice perspective to look at young people the way. So they, once I realize yeah. that instead of making a statement, I just ask a question. Right. This is what, and then I found there was more participation. Mm. 
uh, question they yeah they get engagement yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. this is this is the advice that i would so 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 let's uh, again so the literature part right so yeah read yeah you have to drink. bring me back that's how conversations are <laughs> i love it so i mean uh, so what, what, you, you came up with this plan right that you know let's incorporate let's let's make it a conducive environment for authors let let's give polished work to publishers so you come across yeah. a lot of manuscripts where do you think this thing is headed you are wonderful right i know right wonderful wonderful i mean i am so lucky even though i say i'm karma's child i mean right. you know i think i've been put there right uh, i don't claim uh that i'm the best thing that happened to right. us but the thing is from what i see with what the other agents do it's more like a i believe that business because deal. i got spotted by you i believe that <laughs> yeah it's it's more of a business deal right. but i think while publishing a book is pure business right but there's also literature there's also a school of thought mm. there's also expanding your thought originality origin i mean i won't be here if it is wasn't for the 4 am get up and read a book yeah yeah even yeah. if i got up and read in it blight right but it transported me to a different world yes. uh you know uh, so the written word is so powerful hmm. and the thing is except for a you know amar chitra katha and all that we didn't have the popular indian writers writing for different age group i i don't see that uh in a large way mm-hmm. but the people who contact me i find a lot of people are doing in the children space in the 4 to 8 group the young adult 10 to 15 right. age group right. coming up with uh, different stories and what i find in the last one year you know after this pandemic uh, the kind of people who are making inquiries with right. me i don't go out there and seek anybody mm. anymore Uh, sure you know because it's just not possible yeah. you're not having any events to go to right. and uh, so whoever comes through me through my website or through linkedin or whatever right i find a lot of senior people mm. post their corporate career are writing beautifully you know huh. uh, and each one has their own personality they're yes. writing fiction they're writing non fiction they're writing very well researched like mm-hmm. i'm like i'm just uh, reading one uh, you know on the history of afghanistan right uh the 50 year history of afghanistan till 2015 mm-hmm. and 50 years behind and uh one of the publishers asked me you know but what is the india connect right and i was like what is the india connect he said we need to know what's happening in our neighborhood right because because there is a religion and terrorism nexus uh-huh. and what happened in one country has you know even though he said the silk route no longer right. exists right. but there is a spillover yeah. and uh, you know you need to understand that yeah yeah uh, you know it's a, it's a, it's a geopolitical requirement for right. you to know your right. neighbor and uh, Uh, so so they are able to research over several decades uh, you know this this person is a ex ias officer and lot of senior corporate guys were writing amazing stories amazing stories uh, so i think the problem i figured it out right now during this conversation that i'm having with you that we aren't celebrating diversity right now that's the only thing i mean we should so it has become a business it hasn't turned ugly yet like movies and all when was the last time like that you 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 i'm talking bollywood not hollywood people say that we are you know uh, you know we become suckers for hollywood stuff but they produce amazing stuff after every i don't know 6 months one or two movies they just shake you they're like what the hell happened to me when was the last time before like pre pandemic world you went uh uh for movies and you stepped out of the hall bollywood movie and you were like what the hell happened to me because i don't remember that happening and the same goes for literature that when was the last time that happened like what's happening like why are what's happening really i want to be entertained and when it comes to my country and my movies 
I'm hopelessly stuck with these guys who are the major stars. They aren't producing shit. I mean, sorry, they, they, I, I, I didn't see a good movie coming out from mainstream Bollywood ever since, I don't know. Exactly. I entirely agree with you because what is entertainment is different to different people. I, I understood, yeah. It, you can't be dumbed down a brainless blockbuster slapstick unintelligent in my view jokes don't make me laugh right uh, you rather you cringe what's right. going on but there are a, a few stories you know there, i saw one story uh, one movie hukkapas is that a wrestler hukkapas or Huk- i mean i'm oh, I, wrong, right? maybe i don't know the two movie. three years back and uh, you know it didn't have major stars okay and we went to see it because my friend's daughter's friend was acting in it okay okay and she said we have to i think it's mukka bas mukke bas mukka bas mukke bas about, about about a boxer a right? boxer yeah, yeah yeah not a wrestler no no boxer boxer, boxer. mukka bas yeah, yeah mukka bas yeah, yeah. and it was set Pugilist, in small yeah. town yeah small <laughs> town uh, uttar pradesh right the language was very yeah open. i remember the trailer Uh, you remember yeah, yeah, yeah very very guy. very uh, amazing vo- volatile kind of guy amazing that was hollywood style production quality acting essence and right and when i'm saying hollywood i'm, I'm saying something that is globally acceptable Re- yeah that's the term global see slapstick comedy i understand there is a market for that yeah but, uh, agreed but there are a few things when you cinema like you know books are long pages of words a different kind of content content it's not for everyone everyone you know people don't have that thing that okay i'm going to sit and read to be very honest cinema is much more interactive right you know yeah. movies with the visual audio right so when uh, i forgot the thing what was i talking about so yeah there are slapstick comedy agreed yeah it's not like you know people there is a market people want to see slapstick but a few things are very baser they are very natural when you create certain movies the way you said hollywood you said that it has all those ingredients that will connect with everyone right that's i don't see that happening anywhere in look at the dog movies in hollywood the dog movies mommy okay. and me right yes. right what is that crying in the racing in the rain that's or, 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 or those about those wolves uh, i have forgotten the name you know these are just pet movies one because one lady has come a dentist she has written a story about lassie, her dog is there only yeah lassie lassie, 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 lassie. lassie yeah and she has written a book about her dog the golden retriever yeah uh, and she said that you know i have only seen some projectors of her and i have said man this looks very cinematic she yeah. said she said this is what i had in mind because why aren't we producing a movie about a relationship with a pet yeah yeah our relationship with this pet and we don't have that because because everything is that work mm. amitabh bachchan as the superhero or salman khan or whoever and <clears throat> we'll keep repeating that and i idolize these guys salman khan amir khan shah khan i used to, they were my heroes and yeah. they have messed it up right now i'm I mean because they became the film industry. I don't they know. They became what... the film industry. Okay, then don't work now. Look at Clint Eastwood. I mean, look at Clint Eastwood. Look at uh, uh, who's the James Bond? Sean Connery. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Sean Connery didn't want to be James Bond anymore. Right. And then look at the work he did. Uh, what do you think about uh, new Indian actors? Ranbir. I think Ranbir Kapoor is phenomenal. I think he's an amazing, he's fantastic. amazing actor. He can grab Ranbir. your attention. Ranbir. Yeah, Ranbir. Not Ranbir Singh. Not yeah, Ranbir Singh. I, the... Might be a good actor for some. <clears throat> Ranbir Singh never impressed me much. Ranbir Kapoor. Ranbir Kapoor. He has the capability to grab your attention and retain it till the end. He can do that. Without the antiques. Yes. That Indian Hindi cinema or Indian cinema. Without any Dinja drama. He yeah. can grab your attention. Just just by not speaking. Yeah. Or speaking. Whatever he does. You He's know, natural, right? Because that's the most difficult thing. That's what Amitabh Bachchan said. He right. said, if I have a lot of dialogue, I have a lot to do. It's easy for me. Yeah. But if I am a part and I right. just have to stand there. Right. And then I have to just say one word or I have to... that is most difficult you know i i'll put it out there in the universe i have written a few things i wish one day ranbir kapoor acts on something that i have written 
I once you put it out, it's out in the I wish I, I have a few roles and I'm writing a few. So it's very natural that a writer thinks that how will it come on screen if something is adaptable, right? If something yeah. is. Some pieces of literature aren't adaptable at all. No. You can't just you know, no, do you that. Yeah. I've written such stuff and I've written such stuff that actually can go on screen. And I have, I have fantasized that, you know, one day maybe this guy, because he's so damn good, he, he does a fan. So why don't we see more of Ranbir Kapoor taking risks? You know, why? You know, it's because they become a brand. Yeah. The failure becomes, a, uh, they are going to lose everything else, even yeah. if they are ready for that challenge. Yeah. You know, the ecosystem will stereotype you. Yeah. Like if you, if you look at Amita Bachchan, yeah. I think he is one of the finest actors. Yes. Not in India, I think a famous actors in the world. Yeah. And all of his youth has gone in, you know, doing this masala movies. Yeah, that was the uh, you thing know he, 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 he came in a little early right. uh, into this thing. And so is Devanand. Right. Okay. You I, know, I keep on thinking I haven't seen how Devanand movies. much contribution right. to uh, he is he is in the Clint Eastwood. Mood. His I mind heard, was always I, ticking. I heard, I His heard. mind was always ticking. My mother cried when he passed away. I took cry. Yeah, my mother cried. I thought he would never die. Yeah, <laughs> immortals, right? He was immortal right. because he was. Yeah. His, his boots were all always can do, right. can do. Right. Yeah. And he was relevant. He didn't. He didn't uh, sit on his laurels. Mm. Yes. He was like, I can do. This is today's story. I will do this. Same story. goes for Amitabh Bachchan as well. Yes. And Amitabh Bachchan, I see him. Pushing the envelope like anything yes. within what yes. the structure is, and because he is there, filmmakers also can make a uh, wazir. Yeah, wazir. What, what a, a wonderful movie. movie! What a fantastic movie! Fantastic movie! Right, right. Where he had nothing. He was sitting in a wheelchair. Right. What a movie! Beautiful right. movie. See, where are these movies? Why do I have to? You know, even <laughs> even in the two scenes, he came in the Great Gatsby. Yeah. Yeah. Remarkable. Yeah, he you, has that. You, your eyes were fixated on him even though yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio was standing next to him. What's the character's name? Uh, hold on. The hold Jewish uh, man. No, Amitabh Bachchan's uh, character in Great Gatsby. Yeah, the, the Jewish name it is. He's a, he's a anyway, Jewish Yeah, yeah I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, he has that impact. Like, kind of overshadowed yes. DiCaprio and everything when he came. You, you, you felt it. You okay, felt as an Indian, a little biased. Sure. Sure, as an Indian, I'm a. I, I was a little biased. That no, but everybody it. felt. Yeah, it. it you was know, Leo very... said that when he came, there was an aura. Yes. Yeah. There is an aura. Yeah. So I, guy, these guys are superheroes. If they. If and they you ask him, he said, "I had sleepless nights. I had butterflies in sure. my stomach. I was so nervous." Sure. But you don't show it. Yeah, exactly. You do. You don't. Fantastic. Not operate. He says once everything is on. Yeah. I think the You're same goes for literature, same goes for cinema. People, you should recognize, sure, more and more writers should come up, but you should also recognize the gems and they should be given full gusto that, okay, this is a guy who can actually, you know, rip you off from your stupid reality, boring reality, push you in a world and in an unknown space and, you know, unsettle you right there that you don't want to come out that what the hell happened to me I, I, I would like to do that to my readers that what did everyone you do to me with this book yeah. this shouldn't be happening in my head I want to do that like, you know I also find another uh, you know this class divide I see very strong in okay India. another thing yes, that I yeah, see yeah. And, and this is the one that with bookaholics uh, and, and trying to break that uh, right. stereotype is uh, a, a serious English reader. Right. I don't like Indian authors. Like th this is. They make coming? the they make the sluice come in. I don't like Indian authors. Oh yeah, yeah. You you know this thing about oh Indian author. Yep. And but do you blame them, or uh, haven't they tried many? Like w have Indian they haven't tried many. Right. But you are, you are fixated on this English yeah. foreign thing. You see. Uh, uh, confession, I don't say this out loud, but since I'm talking to you and you are the relevant person to talk to this about, when I wrote my first book, right, Beyond Three Words, after Beyond Three Words, the first thing that I heard from people was, like, it's, oh, they said, all those people who praised my work, they were like, it's a good book, it's a fantastic book, you are so unlike Indian authors. Yeah. I, I didn't like that. Yeah. I was like, dude, why do you say that? 
What That's do you so, mean by that? Yeah, it's a, it's, it has got nothing to do with any country. It's a fictional world, fictional characters. There's no space like that you can name on your world map right now. So why do you say that it's westernized or you you were so different from it? Oh, no, I don't say that. I don't. I never say that to my readers. But I just gauge that. Okay, that's what they have you in mind. You are Indian, and this is what you had to write. So that it makes it as Indian really? as possible. It's so unlike other Indian authors. This comment, yeah, I, we need to crush this statement. We need statement. to crush yes, that. Yes, yes, I we agree. Need I to agree. Crush, and we have decided whenever we have the event that we all Indian authors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, debunk. Uh, this prejudice or this right. know, the, 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 the view that they have, which is not always. See, they'll always be good writers. They'll be bad writers. Mediocre what writers. is good to me yeah. may not seem very good to you. It may be yes. very good to somebody else. All need to survive. Yes. All need to survive. Ecosystem. Yes. And while while we raise the bar for everybody. Yes. Very important. Yeah. We have to raise the bar. We cannot. You know, I see this thing about poor language. Yeah. I mean, while language is evolutionary and language changes, if yeah. you see 100 years back, what was the language of today? It yeah. becomes the norm today. Yeah. And But still, there has to be some conformity to some kind of a structure. Yeah. You know, you yes. cannot break every rule possible. In one go. <laughs> I mean, you can. And see, look at Shakespeare. Uh, unless, right? <laughs> unless you make that work. Yeah. You and have create to, a you new have to that is. The Shakespeare in the world of Bhagat. Because and, it's very distracting. Yeah. So people don't. That, that's risk taking. No? So somebody I like promote me. That. I promote that. You fail. Worse come worse, you fail, right? You fail. Yeah. But if it works, it works. Then it's magic. Then you are there. You are there. Yeah. Are there. And, and who. See, if, if I look at. Uh, Say, for example, the Booker Prize winner. Right. Okay. The Booker Prize winners, if you take last year or 10 years, 20 years. Right, right. If you take the long list of people who are okay. in the long list for the award. Right. More than half of them are Asian. Yeah. Japanese. More than a major chunk of them are South Asians of Indian origin. Right. Okay. Right. But none of the books are published in India. Why? Why? The risk averseness. Yeah, there's no market. And then, no, it's the publisher who doesn't. Like it because, won't sell. Like say Arundhati Roy, right. when she came. She was right. a nobody. Right? right. She was a film writer. Right. She wasn't even a writer writer. Yeah, yeah. Right? She wasn't film writer. She wasn't a novelist, writer. novelist, yeah. Uh, she wasn't known as that. She comes up with this book. Right. Nobody wants to take this on. Right. A agent in UK, Bloomsbury. Right. Uh, I think it was Bloomsbury. I don't know. Uh, I publishes think. it yeah. in UK. Right. Wins the Booker Prize. Right. Yeah. Right? It could have been published in India. Yeah. It could have gone as an Indian published book of an Indian mm. author. And once she won that, you celebrate her year. Yeah. Why? And, you know, there was in... Uh, Westland Books, which is an Amazon company yeah. now. Okay. Uh, I sent a science fiction story, which had a lot of Indian elements. Right. It wasn't like a different, there were a lot of Indian elements in that science fiction, beautifully written uh -huh. story. I really loved it, but right. it was written by a European. Mm -hmm. And then I said, maybe Westland is, you know, because they are Amazon and yeah. Uh, global company. Uh -huh. uh, so why don't... So I sent it to them and said, what do you think? Right. And the editor read it and she said, I find it very gripping. I couldn't stop it. Mm. Stop reading it. Right. But I'm not going to accept this because the writer is a foreigner. Yeah. And <laughs> we do not know how to market that. I said, that is the easiest thing. Yes. Ask me. Yes. Ask anybody. Yeah. You are Amazon. I mean, it's where... Really you you have thrived in India. Amazon is not an Indian company. <laughs> you remember that conversation with that... Uh, what, what do you call them? Uh, web series producer? Yeah. He's, remember he yeah. said that, okay, Beyond Three Words, it was a great story. And I was happy. I was like, okay, we are headed somewhere. And then he said, but we can't produce that. Because Indian market isn't ready. That's what no, it is. They are not ready. 
Because Indian market is not ready for that. No, it is. They are not ready. The Indian market is really ready. Yeah, that's the fact, right? But that's the explanation. Indian that market we... is ready to eat Lebanese food. <laughs> <laughs> we are ready for anything foreign. Yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, And I'm not even talking foreign. I'm talking my book. Like, you know. Look at all the movies. <laughs> my name is coming, and then she saw Titanic on the television. Yeah. She said, "Yeah, yeah. She doesn't die. He dies, and all." I said, "You have seen this movie? Yes. This comes in Marathi." Yeah. <laughs> Titanic in Marathi. That'd be awesome. <laughs> but she's watching it. Yeah. Our children. She said, "We all watch Titanic." Yeah. We all yeah. watch Titanic. Yeah. So why can't just to assume that they will not watch it? I think it is their own laziness. Mm. To a great extent, it's laziness. It's an unwillingness to hear, and and maybe the, there is the business model. But I'm saying that you can make a model that is. You don't need to make like in IT companies. I'm saying why do you need to make eighty percent? Profit? Would you make twenty percent profit? Is that not enough? Yeah. When your two billion company, you make twenty percent profit. It's still a several millions. Right. Yeah. Right. Why do I need on everything I do forty percent? Mm. It cannot be driven by that kind. That becomes greed, according. To yes. Me. Yes. That messes up the creativity. Because your only thing is, will I, will I, how much money I make? Yeah. But by expanding. By making small wins and expanding, you're making a bigger market for. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that is what I think with books you can really I, do. You can I really wish do. you success with First Forest because you know, so far, ये एक लोटा प्लेटफॉर्म ऐसा है that you know at least we're thinking about it, right? At least we're talking about it, and we are going to materialize it. You know, it's a good start at least. You know, the couple of people who have talked to me have found me being a very different. I uh, mean, they said. I said I will naturally be different because I'm just being myself. Yeah. I have not met any other agents. Yeah. I've met one, and that person I really don't want to be, mm. uh, because I've got several feedback from yeah. them which yeah. uh, I don't wish that for myself. That's right. not who I am. Yeah. And while I'm a small entity. Yeah. Uh, but I think. I think by doing the right things right. with the right motive, yes, uh, you know, I'm going to do big things. Yeah. Not not that I'm going to make a crore of rupees. Right. That's irrelevant for me right now. Right. I mean, I can do a lot with a crore of rupees, but it's irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, but I really want to make a mark on the literature public reading space. Yes. You know, and if I can partner with people who are of like-minded thing, yeah, that synergy, uh, you know, that you create, right, uh, that momentum mm. that you create, uh, I think it's it's there, yeah. you know, and like you said, I'm throwing it out in the universe. Right. You think about it, it somehow Manifest, conspires yeah. to happen, and that's the karma girl, right, you know, and the karma girl, <laughs> karma's child, yeah, Sweet. karma's child is what I said. Uh, because because many things uh, that you don't the the good things that happen to you are those that you sometimes don't aim for it yourself. It just lands. Sounds magical, but yeah, I believe that. I mean, I'm talking I want to purely that. from. So, which is why you should be open to do everything and yes. not just have that very you know forty percent everywhere. If it is twenty five percent, chalega. That twenty five may become seventy five percent, not forty. Yeah. By you doing just the right thing, right. not aiming at seventy five, yeah. ho jata. Yeah. You know, and I am saying that unless it's a win win for every stakeholder. Mm. Today, what I am seeing is the editor makes whatever money they want to make mm. because that is their rate card. Yeah. They make their hundred uh, percent. The publisher says. This much is what I will invest in you. Yeah. And unsold books, book buyback buy buy clause is there in every huge burden on buy author. Buyback. Buyback. <laughs> Imagine some author yeah. not even selling two books, he'll be like, he's doomed. <laughs> yeah, buyback. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, in, in today's time of print on demand, I don't see why you you're not really printing thousand copies and selling. Yeah. It. You print overnight. I, I, you get the order. You print overnight. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so this, I really this don't. Buyback this. clause needs to go. Like, yeah, it does. I swear, for every author, I'm not just saying out of 
you know, you it, it's, 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 it's a big, it's a big challenge for authors. It's a sword hanging on the so, author's head, right? You know, and sometimes... He'll be scared going traditional publishing. He'll be like, okay, buy back. I do. There was one publisher <laughs> who said, it. buy back within three months. I said, man, a book needs at least a year out. How can you it's say really three good. months? He should, <coughs> he should finish. Imagine an author buying back and... <coughs> Uh, selling millions posthumously. You know, things can happen, right? <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, anything that you want to share? I had a fantastic time. Uh, you, you, you are big on second innings. I want to talk about yeah. this philosophy of yours. Because yeah. you don't, it doesn't feel like you wish to retire at all. Uh, it looks know. like I'm still in the first few Yeah, years. yeah. Uh, yeah, so why second innings? What sure. I mean by second innings is, you know, when you're young, 20s, you start off your life. Right. You have a whole set of dreams and you have to establish yourself. Not a, not all of us inherit wealth that can last us for a yes. time. So yeah. we have to do that. And we want to have some comfort, mm. uh, you know, some kind of a lifestyle. So you work towards that. Yes. You know, so there's financial responsibility. Then yes. you have a growing family. Yeah. Uh, which is everything comes down to finance yeah. right? because you have children, their education, blah, blah, yes. is again money and you have to secure your own old age, right. you know, yeah. because our government, you pay lakhs and crores of rupees over a period, 30 year yeah. period like me, uh, but uh, you get nothing for in return, you mm. get nothing. Like in this pandemic, I was thinking you gave 500 rupees or 100 rupees to people below poverty level but what about single women like me right. who have contributed to the exchequer in every which way by right. paying direct tax right. also being a consumer of goods and services right. for 30 35 years right. you are also paying tax right. you are keeping the economy right. if i if i'm not by going to the hotel right. if none of us go to the hotel that business doesn't work right because we all go and patronize mm. that yeah. restaurant yeah. He also thrives. He pays tax. Right. So many things. That's how you keep yes. the economy going. Yes. And when people say, why do you complain that it is uh, dirty? Why don't you go and clean? I said, I'm too expensive to go and clean the streets. Mm -hmm. But I am paying enough tax to give somebody a livelihood who can do yeah. his, his education yes. and everything matches that. Right. He cannot yeah. become a right. manager. Right. If all of us are just only doing hmm. uh, cleaning the streets yeah. or yeah. cleaning the rivers, then we don't have development for anything. Who's going to build the planes? Yeah. Who's yeah, going to make enough. the movies? Yeah, yeah. Who's going to... So I said, that's a very, very silly, hmm. ill-thought-out uh, thing. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, you are not taken care of. Yeah. You know, even though you pay 30-35% indirect tax, and indirect taxes, all of us pay. Right. Right, and you land up paying 60% tax right. if you look at 60, it, 60, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 60 65% tax. And so, there is no so. What I'm trying to say is that your initial year, right. you know, when you have all these responsibilities, a roof over your head, and yeah. not everybody can live like a like a bond or you know, yeah, kal de ka jayega. not everybody has that. <laughs> yeah. I certainly didn't have it, and uh, so once all that is done. You know, the pressure of putting up with crap yeah. is loosened. And then and then finally you come back with how much do I need to live? All the other things are crap. I don't need these 40 pairs of shoes. And and you realize that it's remarkably low. I mean, the kind of things that you need. Right? Yeah, no, it's no, not no, even expensive no. at all. It's not. But, but like I talked of Clint Eastwood and Devanand and all these people. I mean, you don't, you don't sit now goalpost over. You are not being born just to survive. You are not a pet. Khao, pee, sleep and, and then I am dead. Mm. Yeah. I mean, at least I am not that person. Mm, I definitely mean, I will find with my classmates and all, you are retired, why don't you do I am like, you are retired from that job because they put a age barrier. Yeah. In the couple of IT companies I worked, we didn't have a retirement age. There were people who were 80. As long as their brain was sticking, their legs were uh, able okay. to carry them, okay. they were still working. There okay. was no, no, uh, the service thing agreement did not say that if you attain this age, right. you're going to retire. Yeah. And I think 58 and 60 and all in today's time are very low. 
I think we are still in youth. Mm. You know, there's this Harvard uh, research that they found mm. and they said that you are in your youth till you're 65 years old because nowadays you're living longer. Yeah. And he says you cannot live 40% of your years as an old person. Yeah. If I'm old at 60, if I'm yeah. categorized as old exactly. uh, and I go on to live till 85 or 90, mm. uh, you know, which is 40% of my life, it, it says it's not how long you have lived yeah. that matters, it's how much longer you're going to live that matters whether you're in your youth or in your youth. Right, so if for example dementia or so, you know, <clears throat> if someone's senile or decrepit or, and dementia kicks in, then makes sense that okay now no, this then person... then the faculties are not right. Exactly, yeah exactly, the faculties are not. But I, I mean, I, I, I see you, I don't even want to ask how old you are right now because you, know, you feel yeah. like as vibrant as I don't yeah, know, I, people who are 20s. Yeah, I'm as old as I am. Yeah. <laughs> so but you know, I'm at 55. Right. People don't want me when I'm a woman. Uh -huh. I'm a senior person in the hierarchy, right. which means they have to pay more. Right. Though I'm ready to take a 25% cut because okay. because I don't need that, that kind of money. Yeah, yeah. You my have that clarity. My needs are very small. My yeah. my core uh, needs are already met. Hmm. Roof over the top. Daughters yeah. educated. What else? Now right. it's my future life. My health. Right. Nothing else. Yes. yes. If I have hundred saris, it really doesn't matter. It may be, do a my ego some good. Yeah. But if you're wiser, you realize ego is a silly thing. Right. It's important, I guess, in your youth, I think. In your youth it is. Yes. You know, it is it because you, you haven't seen enough of life. Right, right. But so, the more life you see, you right. come back and say, man. Have you seen? Okay, a, a spontaneous question. So when I listen to, you know, great personalities who've made it for example i listen to mike tyson sometimes he has his own podcast you'll be surprised that such a beast of a man right mike tyson he is so smart this guy's so profound and since you know yeah. all his life he dedicated his life to violence and he was actually the most violent person in the world of violence right so he dedicated his life uh, you know there and then now you see the transformation he has some profound things to say and when he talks about ego he will let you know that that's also important to win. I mean, you can't, if you listen to old people, they'll tell you, you know, let it go, let it go. I can't let it go right now. I want to prove myself right now. I want to climb the ladder when it comes to the world of literature, right? I want to be there. I see myself there, right? Yeah. So there's this huge pride, this huge ego. I'm the best, I'm the best. It keeps talking in my head. I think that's necessary. You know, if you didn't have ego, right. then people will walk uh, all over you. Right, right. So for you to stand up yeah. uh, for yourself, right. for what you represent, right. you need to have that ego. Right. What I meant is ego as a status symbol. Look at the car I drive. It's, okay. it's irrelevant. That might be material. That kind of a thing. But right. personally, you must have that ego because unless you have that, right. uh, which means you're respecting yourself and what you stand right. for, others right. will not do that. Yes. Unless you do it yourself, right. for yourself. Yeah. Uh, you cannot expect anybody else to do it. Right. If you run yourself down all yeah. the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that you have to do it. Yeah. But what I'm saying is the frills you go through. That yeah. is... Too that much. also comes uh, through age, I guess. Yeah, right? but once... Eventually. At least in my case, I find that that no longer matters. I mean, I did... I did never want it to go and not buy only one pair of shoes. Right. <laughs> because like, why make a choice that I can get yeah, whatever yeah. I So you've, you've lived that, that's why you believe I've that. I've lived that and now I don't want that. Right. At that time, that was the right yes, thing. Yes, yes. You uh, need to live that to say that, okay, exactly. that's not necessary. You exactly. did that. Exactly. Yeah. If, if somebody has not lived it and right. you tell them, they'll say, see, they're denying me that. If I see a beggar who's <laughs> always been a beggar, and he talks how ridiculous money is. I'm not going to believe him. I'm like, dude, you never had it, right? <laughs> the only ones who say money is important are the ones who have pots and pots of it. Okay, okay, okay. Only those say that. Right. Because for you and me, we want that money. Right. For what it can do for you. Mm -hmm. It can give you some comfort. It can give you a freedom. You yes. know, money frees you up from certain things. Yes, yes. That's why a lot of artists, including me, work really hard so that, you know, they get the freedom to 
indulge more in their creativity, creativity. Or, work, or work whatever they do whatever yes. they do yeah otherwise you have to work to pay the rent right do things that you don't like to do like right. actors right. they become waiters and all yeah. that to pay the rent yeah. to pay for their food like, yeah. you know and it is it is it's not a very nice feeling beyond a yeah, you know, people, people burn out, they break down. Burn yeah. Out. Yeah. I mean, how many people have that lasting spirit, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, to spirit to go through that the Fire, hardship? Yeah. You must have the drive yes. because uh, you know, otherwise you don't. So, second innings, I think it's very important for mm-hmm. you to keep yourself because you're still young. Yeah. In today's time, you know, 60 is the new 40 or whatever they say. I think it's very true. Right. Uh, age is. Uh, uh, it, in fact, a 55 for a woman, I think, is the best age to work. No way. It's the best age to work. Right. Because uh, you don't have the family responsibility. Right. You're an empty nester. Right. Uh, you're financially uh, sort much of better yeah. off. Your right. basic needs at least are right. met. Uh, you know, and you have the experience. Right. And you have the wisdom. Right. And a, a calmer way of looking at things. Right. You know, you are not that impatient. You are impatient for results, right. but you are willing to let go of certain things. Right. Which ten years back I would have been like, I just can't bear it. Why wasn't this year it had to be year? Yeah. Uh, you know, so but people don't want that. Mm. You know, which is why you have to do something make within what is available to you. Right make yourself relevant and that I think that is what will keep uh, people healthier a mm. certain wellness right. a sense of satisfaction which is not centered around you and your home like I see a lot of people keeping their house clean just <laughs> I mean that is a maintenance like I say you that's, have to breathe that's OCD that's obsession you have to breathe you have to maintain hygiene cleanliness yeah. order but that cannot be the purpose of my life right. I'm not a crow or a dog or something just I will just clean my yeah. thing and I live in this it's hard world. to put up with such people because they're obsessed so with. you have to go out yeah. do things that you have not done before right. utilize some of the skills that you have mm-hmm. uh, and do something for somebody else that gives me yes. a lot more satisfaction yes. yes which is beyond my needs that I help you in yeah. some small way achieve your yeah. dream right. without like you know how much money I'm going to make out of it yeah because I feel if I help you succeed because you already you are the diamond right you just need that little yeah. the, the cut right. or the avenue or the light thrown on it right and everything else will fall in place yeah but if I'm just running after money and then, you know, like uh, the, I said that that is not what I want to right. be because that is at my stage in life. Yeah. I think there is a lot more to do mm. and that keeps you healthy. Yes. It keeps your thoughts away from yourself mm. and your past. Yeah. It's all your past is important. You should know from where you came and. Yeah. But you you cannot always be Dwelling talking that, about yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. If, if I keep on telling, in 1982, I did this, this was that, it becomes boring <laughs> conversation. In a way, yeah. And then you begin to think, how old is this woman? You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's all you're thinking, nothing else. You're not listening to what right, I'm saying. Right. You know? Yeah. So I think second innings for everybody uh over 50, 55 should do something new that they have never done before right. because that engages your mind. Mm. The art of learning something new, right. of discovery, right. uh, not doing what you have already done for 30 years. Right. That's okay. Even though the world has changed and things have changed, but it's very linear. Right. Yeah. There is, you know, certain things are still common. Yes. The principles of insurance have not changed right. for 500 years. Mm. They are the same principles. Yes. But if you go out and do something, picking up a new skill Mm -hmm. and the wisdom and the experience that you have gained in other things will propel you to do something that is much more than selfish needs, much more. That will be far more fulfilling. It is, it's very fulfilling. Right. It's very fulfilling. And that's, uh, you know, I sometimes like to be the karma's child and yeah. it is, I, it fell on my lap. Yeah. 
uh, I didn't want to do it because like why do I do it? Uh, you know, then I become answerable. Then you'll call me. What are the update? Yeah. And I was like, man, I have walked away from that. Right. You know, targets and all that. But this is keeping me engaged. It's giving nice. me a purpose. Purpose. Very important. Yeah. Because the thing that. I quit much earlier than I would have quit if I mm. was working, but I had enough of the stupidity and I said, yeah. enough is enough. I do not, I don't want to get up in the morning and I have a headache only because I want to go to work. Right. right. Like a young kid doesn't want to go to school, school just yeah. become sick. Huh. I didn't want that. Right. And, but I also didn't have a purpose mm. to get up and do work. Mm. Doing the dishes, doing the laundry, I mean, those are mundane mandate it's necessary yeah. but it's not my life's goal my day's goal right so when you are dissatisfied is mm. when things come to you when you're very satisfied they won't come to you fantastic wow dissatisfaction is a good thing when people say why are you dissatisfied i said yeah you shouldn't be so dissatisfied that i'll go and beating yourself up mm. But dissatisfaction means I want more. Change it. Yeah. I want more. I'm ready to do that. Mm. That will come to you. Yes. And the and the higher the bar you set for yourself, right. that becomes the norm. Yeah. Standard. That becomes the standard. Like yeah. like I wonder why my daughter doesn't think I'm a great person. <laughs> but for her, that's the norm. She's yeah. not seen any other mother. Right. You know. Yeah. I mean, this mother was never scared. Yeah. Of driving in areas that I've never driven before. Right. I see, I see that women, even, you know, driving, you know, highways is a big thing. And I've been like, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny, you know, because I got my license in the US when right. I went there. And then I asked my colleague, Steve, yeah. and I said, Steve, uh, you know, one or two trips can we do together when we go, uh, you know, to the offices? Uh, can you come along with me? Right. He said, sure, sure. Uh, we go in your car and right. you drive. And yeah. so you then uh, we went and uh, uh, you know he was like keep to the keep to the left yeah. the slow lane because you will be driving slow and there are yeah. trucks and everything going okay I was going and then after four or five miles uh, I had practiced before the license okay thing. so I knew but you know the in, in US, the traffic rules are a little different and are yeah. very stringent yeah. and there are no small accidents. Mm. They are huge accidents. Yeah, because, because predictability is what they work on. Mm. The predictable, this is how you are going to drive and you are going to be in your lane mm. unless you are signaled and you have right. checked everything. And, right. In us, unpredictability is what you yeah. call it. Like <laughs> 360 degrees, you have to see in the you know, one direct, yeah. you know, one way street, you have to <laughs> be prepared, something will come. I banged into a calf once. I was riding my bike at 6 a.m. in the morning, empty roads, maths tuition, right? Coming back from maths tuition, out of nowhere, a calf comes in the middle. I banged perpendicularly into the calf, right? And I had, I, 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 got, I got bruised up badly. So, yeah, unpredictability in India, yes. So, I was driving and then suddenly I started accelerating. Yeah. And Steve said, Lalita, what are you doing? I said, I'm overtaking the truck. Right. He looks at me and he, I thought you just learned driving. I said, no, I just obtained the US license. Right. I know how to drive. Now I'm comfortable. I'm going to overtake this. <laughs> and it's a US truck, those huge yeah, yeah, the big trucks. Truck, yeah. Yeah. They're like 50 meters <laughs> yeah. long and they are, you know, I mean, yeah. uh, those fellows don't care. Yeah, yeah. Uh, though they follow the rules and right. everything. And he's like, you don't need me here. <laughs> and, you know, so it, it's courage. Yeah. You know. It, and that comes only if you do it. You don't. You can't sit and wait for courage to come. Yeah, you have to dare. The first time when yeah. I went, my hands were trembling. And mm. It is trembling. Yeah. Uh, you will always feel that nervousness. Uh, if if you don't feel that, then something is wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then then you know. The adrenal rush. Sometimes I can't sleep in the night because, of, like, how come you didn't sleep at night? I'm pretty fresh <laughs> in the morning after two hours of sleep right. because you've just lived on that dinner. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Thanks, Alika. I had a great time. Me too. Thanks yeah. for calling me. Thank you so much.